Looks like some fragments of silicon just blew in on the wind. Welcome to another installment of Fragments of Silicon. I'm your host, Adam. Joining me, as always, are Galax and Petty Fan, the Quake and Doom to my Wolfenstein 3D. That will make more sense in a bit. But um, anyway, let's get to the news. Um, Petty, why don't you start us off this week? Uh, well, I guess in technically gaming news, it seems that my Xbox 360 has left this mortal coil. How old was it? Uh, it was a Jaster, so 2008. Not a bad run. Yeah, it may be fixable. I'm going to get the stuff to open it up. Hopefully it's just, you know, got bumped around in storage and something, you know, connector came loose on the inside. Hmm. And it will yet return to this mortal coil. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, I mean, if I can't fix it, then I'll at least see if I can salvage the saves on the hard drive. Mm -hmm. That's literally what I was booting it up to throw my stuff on the Xbox cloud server thing. Right. And it was like, nope, I'm dead. I mean, it can't be that expensive to get an Xbox 360 in and of itself. Uh, because these days. of the scalpers, it's about 80, 90 bucks, depending on what model you want. I mean, that's not that's not bad. That's not <laughs> bad, but I'm also trying to save up for a either Xbox One or Series X. Well, yeah, that that's more understandable. It would be convenient if you just had to just could get the new one and it would play the old one's game, wouldn't it be? It, it actually it, will, but only you the, know you're, the only the yeah. X will play my um disc games because the S doesn't have a disc drive. Right. So anyway. Um, in other news, um, locals for my Digimon stuff has been going well. Um, we should be having, we don't know if we're going to delay our store tournament because they delayed the new, um, starter, the new booster set until later in November, so... That's something that the stores are going to need to figure out. And... Yeah, I can't, can't think of anything off the top of my head. All right. Y'all, it's Europe. Uh, well, I'm in the Northeast, so it's been raining and winding a lot. Thankfully, we have not significantly lost power or internet. Uh... Knock on wood, fingers crossed that it continues doing that. <laughs> I was about to say trademark yet. Yeah. Um, I stopped by GameStop to see if I could get a code for a shiny Zassian today, and my local GameStop apparently only got literally eight cards, so they were gone. Luckily, um, I found a friend online who had extras. I was about to say, if you need one, I I have errands to run. I could get you one tomorrow. Okay. Uh, no, I, I got one, thank you. Mm. But... Uh, I wanted to try it in person first. I'm right now. I'm more annoyed that I went like half an hour out of my way mm. uh, for nothing. Understandable. Um, and attend it with the weather. I've been having a bit of headaches lately, which is annoying. Um, I did actually start playing Metroid Dread, and it's very good. Uh, oh, yeah, haven't I gotten as far as I wanted to though. Yesterday. <laughs> oh, good. Then I can talk about it with you, <laughs> not on not on stream. Oh God, no! Wasn't it so awesome when the spoilers, spoilers, <laughs> spoilers redacted? Spoil. No. <laughs> All right, knock it off. I know. Uh, otherwise, not a whole lot going on. I don't think. I go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. Um. Yeah. It continues to be. Quasi fall season, as I like to call it, as in it gets pretty 
you know, it gets into the 50s and the 60s at night and in the morning, but during the day, it still will get up to the 80s. It's what the rest um, of us like to call Florida fall. <laughs> yeah. Well, that that's uh, that's this particular area um, because, you know, you go up to the panhandle, you'll get normal fall. And if you go down to, like, Miami, you're, well, you're in the tropics then. Yeah. So, you're pulling out a yeah. board short to get ready to go surfing. Right. It's just, you know, fall doesn't really exist that far south. Mm-hmm. No. It's like Tampa area, that's still technically the um, temperate part of Florida. So we still get seasons, just not as pronounced as, you know, up north. Mm-hmm. No. So, you know, it's also the time when people get sick. Thankfully, that hadn't happened yet since really it only happened a couple days ago. But. Mm-hmm. And. Let's see, as far as games go, I've uh, been playing Growthful for the show, um, as well as Hellblasters. Uh, nothing else. I don't know, I kind of took a break after Cyber Shadow. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's a you know, great game, hard game, and it takes the wind out of your sails. Like, uh, but, and yeah, that's about it for my news. So, merrily, we shall roll along to the interview portion of the broadcast. And joining us this week is our old friend, Stephen uh, Kick from Night Dive Studios. Hey, how's it going? It goes well. It goes well. How about you? I'm doing really well. Um, If you don't know, I'm from the uh, Pacific Northwest, so... We've started the the Pacific Northwest season, where it's basically... (laughs) Raining and raining and raining. So, um, it's a nice. And, and, and you have too many evergreen trees for it to <laughs> really get pretty colors as much. It's a welcome change for about a week. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway, so let's see. It's been, a f- it's been a while since you uh, last on the broadcast. I think that was over Blood Fresh Supply. Uh, but anyway, uh, been a while. Night Dive's been busy, and you know th- there's a lot of things to cover. I, I suppose the thing that uh, we should address first is Shadow Man Remastered. Like, because, well, one of the questions I've gotten prior to the broadcast is, is there any news on the console versions? Yeah, I mean, all I can really say is that it's it's coming. We're still working on it. Um... Shadow Man is just uh, kind of proven to be a little more onerous when it comes to performance on certain platforms. Um, you know, we've we've kind of pushed what we normally do in terms of remasters with Shadow Man by adding a lot of additional rendering features, like uh, the real-time shadows, for one, is mm-hmm. um, pretty intensive on, on just about any machine. Uh, and, it, and it really doesn't have anything to do with the fact that the game came out you know, so long ago, it's that we're adding, um, again, modern rendering features that uh, are kind of pushing the hardware to its limits on, in some some respects. No, uh, I mean, it's certainly not the first time such a thing has been addressed on this program. And yet, yeah, sometimes it can be power, sometimes it's other things. Like, uh, you know, a good example is Unity games, like working on consoles. It's usually not a matter of power. That's a matter of optimization, for example. Yeah, I mean, it is. We are working on it, though. Um, it shouldn't be too much longer. But um, essentially, you know, with... Well, I'm sure we'll talk about Quake later, but um, Quake is something that we were working on uh, for quite a while as well, which, um, I mean, believe it or not, kind of took our uh, priority. Um <laughs> Uh, but uh, we're we're going to be working in the future towards doing simultaneous releases so that um, all of our games come out across as many platforms as possible um, at the same time. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just a better way of doing things. It's just unfortunate um, because we're still a small team when compared to other uh, you know game development studios and um, porting is a time intensive thing especially when um you know every game essentially uses um you know a different engine that it was originally built on this has come up in conversation recently actually and 
yeah, port, uh, old games still have that problem. Like, uh, I'm like, so can you say at what state that the console versions are at this point? Uh, I mean, they're almost done, uh, okay. but I can't, I can't be any more specific than that. Fair enough. There's, a, there's a lot of stuff that we're working on all kind of um, at the same time, and we're trying to wrap some stuff up. And just the way that it's working out is that, you know, Shadow Man is going to be done around the same time as Power Slave and the same time as another game, and they're all kind of going to stack, uh, which is not ideal, but, you know, it's just kind of the way it worked out this time. Right. I, I suppose... Uh... Another question to ask out of all of this is how big is Night Dive at this point? Um, I would say we're probably just under 50 people. And um, half of that is uh, people that are on the Kex team and the other half is uh, the System Shock team. So it's it's pretty much split down the middle. And let's see, thinking about like the Kex team has what? four or five projects going on right now that are known? Uh, I mean, you'd have to list them. I, you know. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, well, there's still Shadow... Run, uh, sorry, Shadow and Remastered. Yeah. Uh, there's uh, Blade Runner Enhanced Edition. Um, yep. Power Slave Exhumed. Yep. So that's three. Uh, System Shock 2 Enhanced Edition I don't think is out yet. Yep. Okay. True. Yep, we're working on that. Yeah. So, like I said, I believe that that's for right there. Sin Reloaded, I don't, is that a Kex Team thing, or is that a new thing? It is a Kex Team project, yeah. Um, I, I can't really get into that, uh, but that's, I mean, that's just another case of, um, oh yeah, this game uses this engine, and so it's going to have to kind of uh, take a a back burner while we figure out some of the things that we're working on, you know, like with Shadow Man, for instance. Um, but it is something that we're actively working on. We actually just hired up um, to get some additional help on that because um, the the blocker that we've ran into with that game um, is outside the expertise of of uh, of everybody else on the team. So we had to. We had to really search and find somebody that was specialized in in, in this particular, um, you know, game development discipline uh, to handle it. Well, I mean, as long as you have found the person to do the job, everything should work out then. It should. And, you know, that's often the most difficult part uh, right now. Uh, the biggest challenge for me anyways is when the team comes to me and they say, hey, we need somebody that's got you know, reverse engineering ex experience with Unreal Engine 2.5, you know, and then I got to go, oh, all right, well, you know, I might find somebody right away or it might take like two or three months. Um, and then, you know, usually when you find those people, they've they've got work already or, you know, they're doing something else. And um, yeah, that's I'd say that's our biggest challenge is finding uh, just people who are qualified in very niche uh, areas of game development. Mm. Niche, but yet burgeoning, like, believe it or not. If only because I've seen a lot more classic games announced for modern platforms, and more people are getting into the scene for various reasons. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's always nice to see, quite frankly. Right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you've got skill in, uh, in reverse engineering, um, I mean, that's, you know, you're not going to have trouble finding a job right now, that's for sure. All right. Um, yeah, hopefully Shadow Man Remastered doesn't take too much longer to um, be in development for the consoles. Um, and I'm assuming that all of the console versions will launch simultaneously? That's the plan. Um, I will say yeah. that... Uh, the, the current gen of consoles, um, everything with, uh, you know, obviously Switch isn't really current um, as far as Xbox Series S and X go and, and PlayStation 5. But right. um, 
the Xbox is considerably easier to develop for because the uh, you know the architecture hasn't changed between um, Xbox One and Xbox Series X or whatever. Right. Uh, but PlayStation Four and PlayStation Five has so um, it's something that's it's hard to convey. But when you're porting a game to PlayStation, uh, you're actually porting to two different platforms, not just one. Right. I remember hearing some. Remember hearing Cerny go on about that a bit, but you know it's the reason why they have to offer up the PlayStation Four and PlayStation Five versions of games as separate SKUs, if I'm remembering correctly. Like, eh. so I'm like, hopefully that's not giving you too much problems. Well, um, it's definitely increased our workload, and it's. It's interesting because, um, you know, from our perspective, we want to hit the platform that's got the most users on it. And right now that's PlayStation 4 uh, because okay. nobody can buy a PlayStation 5. <laughs> yeah. uh, and not only that, but, you know, with the type of games that we release, um, I mean, you're not really getting the PlayStation 5 experience, right? Like you would with, uh, let's, you know, hypothetically God of War ragnarok or a brand new triple a release for that platform you're still playing a game that's <laughs> probably 20 years old and you know looks like quake <laughs> right i suppose that's as good a segue as any to talk about the quake remaster um since that is the most recent project you've completed um at time of recording and I suppose my first question here is, is so how did this all come about? Like, how did you end up working on Quake? And I suppose since we didn't cover this game, uh, Doom 64. Uh, Doom 64 was a project uh, that we approached id um, with a, a number of years ago. And it was before Doom Eternal had come out. And um, at the time... I want to say that they, there wasn't like a particular interest in it. Um, but a number of months later, we did get approached by Bethesda. Um, and they, they said, you know, hey, do you guys want to do Doom 64 and have it be a, uh, like a pre order incentive for Doom Eternal? And uh, uh, Sam uh, Villarreal, who's the lead engine uh, programmer for the Kex engine, had already done a considerable amount of work. Um, on his own, on Doom 64. And uh, so it just kind of was perfect timing, right place, right time kind of thing. And um, we flew to Dallas, and we met with uh, Kevin Cloud at, at QuakeCon, and uh, more or less made the project official there. Uh, but while we were sitting down, you know, having a discussion with him and the team, uh, he basically said, Hey, when this is done, if it goes well, do you guys want to do Quake? And uh, it was very, very difficult to kind of contain our excitement <laughs> in that moment. But, uh, you know, we pretty much unanimously just said, oh, yeah, we'll do it. Sign us up. <laughs> and I mean, so, uh, like, immediately after Doom 64 launched, uh, we started working on Quake. Yeah, I mean, honestly, that could have gone one of two ways, either great elation or great anxiety. Because, you know, Quake is one of the seminal first-person shooters. So, you know, obviously there's going to be a lot of uh, desire to work to get this game on modern consoles, but it's also, you don't want to botch it. Yeah, it had to be perfect, um, or as close to perfect as we could, as we could do it. And mm -hmm. uh, we really threw everything at it. Um, pretty much our entire development team worked on it. Um, anybody who had any spare time helped out. Um, we had uh, the artist that was up the models for System Shock 2 drop what he was doing and, and come on to Quake. And he was responsible for um, essentially adding that, that new level of polish that you see on all the weapons and the power-ups and the characters and um, figuring out the pipeline so that the uh, the Vertex animations carried over. And um, yeah, I mean, we pulled out all the stops on it because, like you said, it's, it's very important to a lot of people. And, um, you know, myself included, I grew up 
obviously playing Quake and a lot right. of in games. And uh, we knew that uh, we had this opportunity to really hit the mainstream kind of with what we did or what we do. Um, we're, I, you know, I still like to, to think that we're relatively small in the, in the minds of, you know, the, the wider gamer audience, but this definitely um, kind of gave us that gravitas moving forward. And, you know, we saw our social media numbers kind of explode after Quake came out. Um, Quake was, uh, was the first game that we've, that we've put out that received like perfect tens on, you know, some review sites. Um, and our name was being associated with it, uh, which was, you know, really important uh, for Night Dive and for everybody involved. Right. I mean, I think the timing of release helped in that uh, regard. Because, you know, it's not just like Quake was put out there on a random Thursday. It's like it was dropped during QuakeCon. So, you know, clearly the marketing people at uh, Bethesda and it knew what they were doing. Yeah, I mean, so that was that was the other kind of thing that uh, we just had to make sure that we, we completed the game on time because, like you said, it came out during QuakeCon, but it was also the 25th anniversary of Quake. Right. Um, and so we had a very, very strict deadline uh, where the game absolutely had to be done and it had to be on, you know, every platform at the same time. Um, so it was, you know, it's safe to say it was probably the most challenging thing that we've ever done, but, uh, I think the results, uh, more than speak for themselves. I'd say so. I played through the, uh, a good chunk of the uh, entirety of the, what's on display there. Um, you know, I think I stopped about episode four just because uh, after about 40 hours, I was kind of quaked out, but yeah, um, uh, very good uh, remake. You know, one of the better I've played. Uh, now, how did the collaboration between you and Machine Games work since they provided the new episode that's in this package? Um, we basically just took the work that they did and made sure that it, you know, that it played well with all the enhancements and everything that we were playing, uh, that we were planning on um, implementing in this version. So we didn't work with them directly on that new episode it was just like hey machine games is doing a new episode and they're just going to deliver it when it's done and you know treat it as if it's a um it's a it's an expansion like scourge of armagon or um right you know dissolution of eternity or whatever right uh, so it's just a matter of good timing more than anything else well yeah i'm sure that um Bethesda and Zenimax, you know, told them what the plan was and and uh, scheduled them out to to complete that um, well in advance of when the game was going to come out. <laughs> I don't know. I wasn't I wasn't a part of any of those discussions. I just know that uh, when it was ready, we had it, and uh, it we had to make sure that it worked with uh, with everything that we were um, adding to the game, which wasn't an issue because it's you know using all the same um you know all the same scripting and all the same effects and and weapon models for the most part mm -hmm. um i suppose like the biggest change was to nightmare mode um for those who might not know uh, or have not played this uh, particular version nightmare mode is now a uh, harder let's say yeah. um because the max amount of health you can have it is 50 like mm -hmm. um i'm wondering uh was that something that it wanted or is that something you added to the game i believe that was at its request um i don't really remember exactly when that came up um but i remember seeing people complain about it right away <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. the game came out well, yeah, I mean, that was going to be very contentious because yeah. um, it's new. It, it, it's a change from what was the original. Um, and I, I, I've seen some of the complaints. Like, uh, some people felt it wasn't in the spirit of things. That is to just make sure that Quake is as accurate as possible on modern platforms. 
you know, sure. it's, yeah, I mean, it's a big it's a big change for nightmare mode for sure. Um, it definitely made it way more difficult. Um, but uh, you know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna pin that on it. And I'm not gonna pin it on us. I'm honestly I don't remember uh, whose decision that was. Um, <laughs> you know, it's definitely gonna add a new challenge to uh, to uh, Quake veterans. That's for sure. No, right. I, I suppose outside of that that particular change, has there anything else that um, was brought up from the Quake community that um, that they didn't like? Um, you know, I don't really, I can't really think of anything. Um, I did read and watch a lot of reviews um, when the game came out, and I. You know, I honestly can't remember anything negative that came up um, out of out of those uh, particular reviews. Um, you know, that would have been based on some kind of change we made that was different from the original. Right. Right. Makes sense. Makes sense. And has all work com- been completed on Quake? Or are you still working on like bug fixes and the like? Uh, well, we just released patch one. Mm-hmm. Um, that's all I can say at the moment. Ooh, interesting. And I suppose to delve into patch one, what was updated here? It was just a uh, minor bugs. Um, you know, I can't, I can't speak to specifics. I'd have to look at the patch notes. I don't really. I haven't. I, I honestly wasn't a big part of the uh, post-launch plan for Quake. I've moved on to other things since then. Fair, fair enough. Fair enough. Like, and um, I suppose another question that I've got gotten is, um, did the Microsoft takeover of Bethesda change any change anything between you and Bethesda? Uh, nope. Easy, easy, easy answer. Yeah, no, nothing changed. <laughs> Good because I, you know, someone was concerned about that. Mm-hmm. But you know that could be a future thing potentially. Let's say, um, because uh, you know I don't know if you've got anything else between you and Bethesda, but clearly that you know that hasn't been announced yet. So th- there's nothing to talk about there. Uh, but anyway, I suppose moving on. Um, so, System Shock. Uh, the System Shock remake. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about it. Yes, yes we do. Uh, yes, we should. Anyway, so I suppose my first question here is, well, I'm going to be direct. Do you see the System Shock remake making it to 2021? Um. Chances are pretty low. Um, you know, a lot of our uh, earlier discussion that we had tonight about simultaneously launching across all platforms is is a is a good place to start in terms of understanding why it probably won't ship this year. Um, there's just a a lot of complexity with the new platforms. Um, you know, some of which I've spoke to um, already uh, with some of our other games. And um, it certainly added on uh, quite a bit of development time. Um, the game has gotten to a point where it's not going to look or feel like an indie game at all. Not, not that I feel like it ever did, you know, based off the demos that we've released. Uh, but we understand that the expectations for the game are very, very high. And, you know, we're kind of, we learned a lot from, from working on titles like Quake, where we are doing something that's so important that we can't afford to make any mistakes. Uh, we can't release a game that's going to, um, you know, not perform well on some platforms while it performs better on others or... Uh, not be as complete or be missing things, um, you know, that, that we that we initially promised, that type of thing. Because we also have the pressure from the Kickstarter backers uh, to think about as well. 
and uh, really um, all the decisions that we've made um, that have delayed the game up to this point have all been based on uh, wanting to deliver something to them that is going to be worth the wait that they've had to make. Um, you know, they've waited longer than anybody else um, for the game, and uh, we want to make sure that it not only lives up to their expectations, but exceeds them, um, hopefully in every way possible. And so I think that, you know, when the game does come out, um, a lot of people are going to be, I mean, for the lack of a better word, they're going to be shocked <laughs> at, uh, at what they're getting, what they're going to experience, because it's... Um, it's you know at, at its absolute core, it's system shock. It's the immersive sim from 1994 that uh, a lot of people remember very fondly and and has inspired and uh, definitely uh, helped create a lot of games in the genre since then. Mm -hmm. um, but it's you know it's obviously it's all new. Every little bit of it has been completely reworked and and redesigned and conceptualized and um, yeah. just poured over by a team of people that are infinitely passionate about the, the property. <laughs> and uh, I think that that is going to show. Uh, there's not going to be any, any doubt um, as to why we took so long or, or um, you know, it ultimately it comes down to like, if we released a crap game at this point, um, it would be 10 times worse. Uh, the weight that everybody has had to make. But because of the way that it's being developed and because of how good I know it's going to be, I think the uh, the the narrative of it taking so long is going to take a backseat as soon as it comes out. And it's not going to be something that's hopefully discussed anymore. And uh, people will just use it as a um, as an example of why you should trust developers to and um, allow them to take their time to make something um, if you want to enjoy it when it's done. I ideally hope so. Um, because, yeah, um, there's been a lot of, you know, um, I suppose hype um, and also apprehension about the System Shock remake. I've, I've seen both. Like, you know, I've seen some people praise the, um, the remake demos. I've seen people not especially like it. Um, but, you know, generally I've seen a, a positive um, embrace of System Shock, the remake. Uh, you know, I think that's for a few reasons. It's like System Shock, I've always felt, is a game that needed a remake or... You know, it's like there's only so much modernization you can do to it because it, it's always going to be a product of 1994, 1995, you know, that era um, when first person shooters and um, in general and, you know, immersive sims are undergoing their genesis, really. Yeah, we've, I mean, we've, we've noticed that and we've um, kind of embraced that from the very beginning. And um, right now, you know, we're doing these uh, these weekly play tests of the of the game. And um, instead of everybody uh, playing it on their own, we're usually having our you know one of our developers play it um, from start to finish. And yeah. we're all watching and taking notes. And um, uh, the game is really hard. <laughs> it's yeah. not easy. And. Uh, and you know, in that regard, and it's just like the original. Um, if you go into this game thinking it's going to be, you know, Doom Eternal or or even Quake or, you know, kind of your um, standard first person shooter, you're going to get destroyed. Um, <laughs> which I think is going to be a really good thing. It's it's going to differentiate itself from a lot of what's out there right now, and um, it's definitely not going to be, you know, what what. Uh, you know, it's not going to be a boomer shooter. It's not going to be something that uh, oh. uh, people are going to be able to just pick up and and uh, and and jump into. It's going to require a lot of immersion. It's going to require a lot of um, patience at first, but once you know you you um, kind of experience the core loop and everything like that, it just mm -hmm. clicks and it just feels good. And um, it's yeah. it's unlike anything that's out there right now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, 
Jeez, we just covered a boomer shooter uh, last week. Like, but um, very different beasts from the immersive sim, to say the least. I enjoy both, but you know that they've got their different um, ethos. Uh, anyway, getting deeper into the consoles. Uh, so, is this game being built for just the Xbox? One and PlayStation 4, or are they getting dedicated to PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X version? Uh, well, the Xbox, um, you know, the Series X enhancements will be, you know, the game will be playable in, in 4K. Right. Uh, at higher frame rates, of course. It's, um, and then, as far as I remember, the, you know, the PlayStation 5 en- enhancements are mostly come down to some of the features that they've added the, to the controller, um, you know, outside of like performance. Um, but the plan is to um, have ports uh, across both those platforms, uh, both both uh, Xbox One, Xbox Series S and X, and PlayStation Four and PlayStation Five. Yeah, I can see why that adds to the workload since. You know, now you've got essentially five systems to release on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah it's, a, it's a lot, and uh, you know, we're still uh, we're still a remote team. Everybody, you know, still works from home, and when we've got multiple engineers uh, needing to work on ports of the game, that means that they all have to have their own dev kits, and uh, so that's just been. You know, it's it hasn't been easy uh, making sure that everybody has um, all the hardware that they need. Um, everybody has, uh, again, you know, with Sony, you've got specific rules to that hardware that are not the same as Microsoft. So uh, making sure everybody can, can use it. Um, it's a lot of work. And, you know, like I mentioned at the beginning, we've, we're about 50 people. And I feel like we're doing... Uh, the work um, for a project that you know isn't or wouldn't be um, unfamiliar to teams of you know two hundred to three hundred people. I'm like it's all relative um, because yeah, we've had people on this program who you know are a fraction of your size and have like sunk the amount of time that System Shock has been in the oven. Um, you know, it's just a matter of scaling and manpower. It's all relative. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's been tough. Um, we definitely won't uh, skirt around that. It's been it's been a challenge because uh, you know, up to that point, anyways, that we decided to do a full remake of System Shock, we had just been focused on you know remastering existing games, and so this right. was something completely new um, that. You know, thankfully, our developers had had experience with before. We'd have all been in game development before, and we we know what it's like. Mm-hmm. But you run into, you know, no matter how how well you think you've planned, you're always going to run into, you know, new problems or new issues, or you know, the game's going to take so long that it's going to bridge, you know, console generations, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, wow, well, we got additional platforms we have to port this thing to. Uh, that we didn't even know about when we started this, you know, started this game. Right. Not to mention, I, I don't forget that the System Shock had a few project bumps along the way. No. Yeah, I mean that they're not uh, they're not in any way unique to just game development. Um, a lot of teams run into them. Uh, I, you know, as a good example, I was watching a video about Hollow Knight, and. Mm. Uh, I didn't know that the game had been in development for so long. I know that it had been kickstarted, but uh, basically they had the same thing where originally when they did the Kickstarter, they had the Wii U version as a stretch goal. But yep. by the time that the game actually came out, the Switch was the you know the dominant platform. And in their case, they owe the success of their Kickstarter to adding in that Wii U stretch goal because the group of people that came in and pledged to the project were the ones that were wanting the Wii U port. Right. And, you know, when it finally came 
down to it, they're like, well, you know, anybody who <laughs> pledged for the Wii U version, you get the Switch version now. And that's just the way it is, because they're not going to go back and, you know, port a game to a platform that isn't supported anymore. No, like, not the only game I can think of. Like, uh, Bloodstained, Ritual of the Night, had um, the Wii U version canceled in favor of the Switch, and mm -hmm. its Vita version canceled, because, well, not only were those platforms not supported, they weren't supported by the engine they were using. Mm -hmm. So, it, it just wasn't worth, worth the effort to bring those games to those systems at that particular moment in time. Um, but, you know, the, the Kickstarter people seem to be okay with the, the decision there, from what I remember. Like, Yeah, again, you know, as long as the game comes out and it's good, I think that it kind of it doesn't completely negate the fact that it took as long as it did, but it certainly helps soften the blow, right? I mean... I, I, and you play, yeah. you play the game, and it's 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 what you are hoping for. Then, you know, you hope to be forgiven for taking so long. It's like, well, I'm sorry it took so long, but do you want it to be good or do you want it to be awful? <laughs> well, yeah, and it's also keeping true to the spirit of the original. You know, I do remember the project being um, waylaid by that at one point uh, during its development. So. Um, I suppose speaking of such things, uh, uh, is there any new content in this uh, version of System Shock? Or is it all just, if you played the original, here it is in glorious modern technology? No, there's a lot of new stuff. Uh, new enemies, okay. new weapons, um, completely redesigned and updated locations. It's... Uh, it's it's going to be familiar but um unfamiliar at the same time if that makes any sense there's just going to be a lot of surprises so um anyone who's intimately familiar with the game is is going to have a really good time because um it's going to feel like you know it's going to feel probably like a dream you know like this is something that uh that they remember fondly um, but it's all new. It's all different. It's, you know, it's going to be a unique experience no matter what your, uh, what your, uh, familiarity is with the original. Hmm. That's good to hear. Uh, uh, and I suppose, um, consoles aside, what is the state of the game in terms of like its content? Like, is all of that complete and it's just like polishing and porting at this point? Um, I'm not sure if I can say, um, all I can say is that we're, we're far enough along, um, and that there's absolutely, you know, no reason to believe in, in any way that, uh, the game's not coming out. Let <laughs> me just put it that way. Okay. Understandable. Understandable. Um. I guess, you know, shifting to something that isn't release-related. Um, how do you, how is this game going to control on consoles? Because that is another thing about the original System Shock. It's a very complicated game. Um, I've heard the term, it feels more like playing an operating system than a game. Mm -hmm. Well, we've done a, a, a lot of playtesting using... Um, the current controllers that are out there now. Um, and we brought on a dedicated uh, UI UX designer who is specifically tasked with uh, making sure that, you know, whoever, you know, if you're playing on console, it's not going to be uh, an onerous experience. It's going to be fun and fluid and, and very uh, familiar if, if you've played any first person game on console. Okay. You know, once again, that, that is good to hear. Yeah, no, that was a that was a big thing. Um, pretty pretty early on too, where we're like, right. you know, there's a lot to do. There, you've got a hot bar, you've got an inventory system, you've got cyberspace, you've got you know multiple ammo types, you've got implants that you can toggle on and off, you've got combat, you've got, um, 
you know, you got a lot going on. And, um, you know, I wouldn't, I, I, I wouldn't say that, uh, to draw comparisons, I didn't, wouldn't say that Quake, or I'm sorry, uh, Doom Eternal was complicated, but there was certainly a learning curve uh, for utilizing all the mechanics in that game to their fullest extent. Um, to the point where, for me personally, it felt like I was almost playing something like um, like Guitar Hero, like it was like a rhythm-based game. Uh, because you start to understand like you know, the cooldowns of, of the various uh, mechanics, like when can you use the ice bomb? When can you use the flamethrower? And then each one of those, of course, is um, responsible for replenishing, uh, you know, either your health or your ammo or that kind of thing. And um, there's just a lot to memorize and a lot to um, to get used to. And I think that it's going to be similar with System Shock, where... Um, it's going to be familiar at first, like the movement and the shooting is going to be, you're going to be right at home if you've played any shooter on console. Mm-hmm. Um, but accessing the other parts of the, uh, of the game are, are going to, are going to require a little bit of practice, but, um, you know, we've, we found that, um, any game that introduces some kind of learning to it, um, is going to be infinitely more rewarding to the player because, once it all clicks, it feels like they've achieved something. You know, like, if you remember any of the, you know, the early games on, like, Super Nintendo or even Nintendo, like, just those first uh, trials and tribulations and then mastery of mechanics, it, it's really, I think, what hooked a lot of us from the beginning is, is um, having to rewire our brain, even to some extent, to, to learn something new in order to succeed or achieve an objective. and. Um, you're going to get that with this. You're not going to be able to just like walk in and just instantly figure it out and, um, and master it. It's going to, it's going to require, um, some time and some commitment from the player mm-hmm. to get the most from it. And, you know, we feel like that is, it's a hallmark of a good game. Um, indeed, you know, provided you can get into that kind of game, you know, people who, don't have the patience for it, but anyway. Um, also, in terms of consoles, uh, I'm assuming that no compromises have been made to getting the game on the platforms. No, in no not, of- in, not in terms of uh, like fidelity or anything like that. Um, I mean, in terms of like uh, like geometry or anything like that. You know, you, you haven't had to adjust levels to make sure they fit on like the xbox one basic no no we there haven't been any compromises um it should be there should be parity between the pc and the the console versions and i suppose if you can elaborate you know outside of like um additional platforms is there anything that's holding up or slowing down the you know production of system shot like is there uh, is are there frame rate issues on the consoles nope no we're not running in any into any um any issues it's just you know we've got a certain team size and we've got a certain amount of work to do and and that's that there's no more blockers there's nothing in our way to to prevent us from finishing the game to the quality level that we're that we're going for and um basically it's just all about time at this point we just need more time and we're going to take it because you know we've come this far and um yeah Yeah. we're not going to take any shortcuts now that's for sure right right you don't want to let's say duke nukem forever this Well, yeah, I mean, I don't know. That would that would require us, you know, some other studio finishing the game eventually, right? Uh, By that yeah. analogy. You know, still, it's more... I mean, yeah, that version of Duke Nukem Forever wasn't always that version of Duke Nukem Forever. But it's also that version of Duke Nukem Forever is Duke Nukem Forever. Mm-hmm. Always and forever. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we're not gonna. It's you know the game's not gonna take another three years or 
I don't even know how many years it'd have to be in development to 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 match Duke Nukem Forever, but uh, yeah, it's it's not going to take that long. <laughs> oh, hopefully not. Hopefully not. Um, I suppose um, in other System Shock news, um, it was announced last week, I think, that there's apparently a System Shock, well, TV show, streaming show, really, that's yep. in development. Yep. Um, so can you tell us about that? Um, I can't really tell you more than what's already been announced other than that. Um, uh-huh. we've had, uh, you know, our, our, um, our level of cooperation is as high as we want it to be. Um, so basically, like I said, everybody that, you know, that's, working on the game is is um you know a super fan let's put it that way and um everybody that uh that wants to have a say or wants to um you know have some part in it uh you know being the best that it can be it's like i it's it's a, it's hard for me to explain like basically our level of uh <laughs> like we can put as much attention into it as as we want, um, and we can help them out in in any way that uh, that we see fit, so that you know the end result is going to be something that we're all proud of. I, I think that's kind of what I'm getting at. It's uh, this isn't going to be just like a throwaway thing. It's not going to be your typical kind of video game adaptation. We've gone into this uh, fully committed to making sure that it, again, kind of like the game we're making, is going to be as good and kind of as true to the to the property as possible. Right. And um, it's coming out on this platform called Binge, mm-hmm. which I got to admit, I'm not too familiar f- uh, with. What, what is Binge? Well, it's a new streaming service that's um, pretty much dedicated to uh, bringing video game adapta- adaptations to life. And uh, we were approached by them originally um with their you know interest in system shock and um you know we did we looked at what they were responsible for and and uh one of the um the driving forces behind binge is alan unger Mm -hmm. and he was the one who uh produced wrote directed and um self-funded the uncharted short uh fan film starring nathan fillion and once I had realized that, um, I knew that these were some people that we wanted to work with, uh, because, you know, as you've probably seen with the recent uh, announcement of the Uncharted movie, you know, the official movie anyways, um, a lot of people have kind of gone back to that short film and said, hey, this is a really high bar that was set by just basically some guy. Um and you know if you don't uh you know you don't you don't reach this uh, a lot of people are going to be uh you know pretty upset and um we knew just from that you know just from the quality of of work he had done on that short that that uh binge could deliver what we were hoping for in a system shock series and is Binge an active platform at this point, or is it still like gathering its content and stuff? They're they're uh, they have not um, officially launched the platform yet. It's all just been recently announced. Right, that's what I thought. As th- I learned of them through their announcement of the Driver program. Right. Yeah, which is based off the Ubisoft game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is a strange choice. If only because you know that that hasn't had a game in a while. Like I, I miss Driver, uh, especially since you can't get Driver San Francisco online, you know, on digital storefronts these days. Uh, well, anyway, I'll um, add Yeah. <laughs> right. I suppose rounding out the System Shock portion, um, you know, I'll, you might not necessarily be the people to ask, but. I, 
I would be remiss if I didn't. Do you know anything about System Shock 3 at this stage? Uh, I don't. Um, I honestly do not. Um, we haven't heard anything in a long time. Um, you know, uh, Tencent did purchase the uh, the agreement that we made with other side from other side. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's pretty much it. It's pretty much all that I that I personally know. Uh, that's all I can really say. Yeah. As I said, it's a weird and sort of unfortunate circumstance since you know other side ran into some severe problems uh, on System Shock Three, but. Um, hopefully things are going well. You know, that, that's about all I can offer up there. Yeah, I mean, it's it's the same from us. I mean, if um, our love for System Shock hasn't been um, on display for the last number of years, then um, all we can hope for is the same, is that uh, whatever comes from all that, uh, we just hope that it's as good and it, and it, um, it pays tribute to the the property and the years uh, the decades that uh people have enjoyed the game and and that um it lives up to um you know what came before it oh right i i do have another system shock remake question and that is um not if it's coming to the switch but could this game uh be brought to the switch um it could be but uh, like Doom Eternal, it would require uh, basically an extensive port that was custom built for the platform in, in order to get the performance that um, you know that people are going to enjoy on PC and, and Xbox and PlayStation. Right, that um, makes sense. Yeah, it's possible. Um, it's all just going to come down to. Uh, you know, how well the game is received when it comes out and then um, kind of our resources at that point. Uh, I know that a lot of people uh, would probably really enjoy it on that platform and it would be great to do it. Um, You know, I think, you know, I could be mistaken here, but Switch is, I believe, has the highest install base out of all the, you know, out of all the consoles. So from a business standpoint, it makes sense. Um, you know, I own a Switch. I own all the consoles. I would love to have a copy of it on it. <laughs> right. And I guess moving on, um, like I said, we had a lot of stuff to cover this time. Um, Power Slave Exhumed. Um, right. For those who might not know what Power Slave is, what is Power Slave? Uh, Power Slave was a game that came out, um, on a number of different platforms in the the mid nineties, um, where uh, essentially each version of the game that was released on on these platforms, DOS, PlayStation, and Saturn, all received a, a different game. Uh, the PlayStation and Saturn games were more closely related and had uh, more of a Metroidvania kind of mechanic to it. And the DOS version was built on the build engine and was more of a straightforward linear shooter. Um, So um, depending on what console you played it on or what what platform you played on, you had a different experience (laughs) from the other people. And um, our goal with this version of the game is more or less to combine uh, the assets from the DOS version with the gameplay and mechanics of the Saturn and uh, PlayStation versions. That sounds like a trying task, actually. Like, uh, has, it, like, has this assembly job been difficult? Uh, it's definitely posed some unique challenges, like getting the level format from the Saturn version to play nice with the level format of the PlayStation version because they're all they're just dramatically different from one another so we had to create some custom tools to kind of um, export you know uh, level data and level geometry from one platform and, and then be able to import it into the other and still retain stuff like UV coordinates and you know texture information and that type of thing 
that does sound messy. It is, but you know, this was uh, again, this was a project that um, that Sam had started, I believe, before he joined Night Dive. Right. And uh, it was always just one of those things where I, you know, had been looking for the rights for years and years and years because um, I grew up with the game. I really enjoyed it on on DOS. Mm -hmm. um, it's probably one of the few remaining shooters that hasn't seen a re-release. And then, um, you know, we were offered the opportunity to uh, essentially create the version of the game that uh, that we wanted to see. And um, we felt like the Metroidvania elements are just, the, you know, the elements of returning to previous levels with uh, power-ups and, and things acquired in other levels was, was kind of important to the experience. And uh, out of all the people that we talked to about the game, it seemed like that that was the version that... Uh, um, you know, people wanted the most. Yeah, uh, I've heard nothing but praise for, like, specifically the Saturn version. Uh, you know, it's like, it's the game that put lobotomy software on the map. Mm -hmm. um, certainly less kind things about the DOS version. Um, and not a whole lot in general about the PlayStation version, if I'm being honest. Just kind of existed. Like, yeah, it's it's very similar to the PlayStation version. Um, but yeah, like uh, you said about Lobotomy Software, I mean, they're kind of like, I would say, almost like a sister company, you know, that we would have had. Uh, because, you know, they were responsible for porting a lot of the id games to Saturn and... Um, uh, some of the other platforms as well, uh, which required a lot of, you know, technical wizardry to, to, to pull off. Yeah, they were, if I'm remembering correctly, they did uh, Duke Nukem 3D and Quake for the Saturn. And, yeah. then, and then they got acquired by Craven Entertainment, were developing a Caesar's Palace game, but then went bust. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, um... And uh, so when people load up this new version of Power Slave, they're going to get this, um, um, like, how are the level, like, is it going to be a mixture of, uh, like, a Saturn PlayStation level, or are they, like, separate levels? Um, you know, how, how is this all working in terms of, you know, structure? So it's it's primarily the the uh, the PlayStation version of the game, but we went through and and uh, looked at all the differences between that and the Saturn, and then took whichever we believe to be the best, you know, iteration of that level, and either combined it or altered it or um, you know just changed it. Really, I mean, uh, to reflect. Again, kind of like what we believe to be the best version. So, yeah, it's interesting. It's uh, we've uh, kind of brought on a couple of people that have are very familiar with both, and let them play test it. And um, you know, the the feedback so far has been like, oh yeah, this is it's the best of both worlds, essentially. Um, I'm interested to see how this uh, works out. And <laughs> I'm assuming the soundtrack is going to be like you've done in the past as well? Like, um, if they were different? Yeah, but I I don't believe that there's any big difference in the soundtracks. Okay. Uh, I'd have to check that out. I, I'm, not, I'm not aware, though, that's the case. But uh, we did get the, the higher resolution sprites uh, from, the, from the DOS version. And swap them over. And how much more work needs to be done on Power Slave Exhumed? Uh, not much. Not much. It's uh, actually uh, in night dive time. It's it'll be out soon. Okay. Right. So it, <laughs> yeah. Whatever that means. Well, it's um, soon TM. Let's say. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm actually I'm very very surprised at how quickly this came together, and um, yeah, it it won't be a long wait for this one, and and uh, hopefully, 
the plan with this one is to do a simultaneous release across uh, the, the platform. So it'll all be available day one. All right. And this is coming to all the major platforms, I'm assuming. Yeah, but no, no, uh, no specific version for Xbox Series X or uh, PlayStation 5. It'll just be the base Xbox and PlayStation 4. I'm oh. sure. I'm sure Power Slave Exum will be fine with that. Mm-hmm. Now, yeah, it, it, it's it, it's not exactly something that's going to need a lot of PlayStation Five power to run. Yeah, yeah, it'll it'll be fine. <laughs> Yeah, and he's moving forward. Um, Blade Runner Enhanced Edition. What's going on with this game? We're uh, we're coming close to the end of that one as well. Uh, that was another one where we we ran into um, you know just challenges uh, that have been documented you know in, in articles before. Just uh, the time that it takes to upres and to use AI to uh, scale up the the cinematics and stuff has been lengthy um but uh that's just a, one of the things that we thought was most important about this release is that the the cinematics looked as good as possible um you know based on their age how is this game going to play on the consoles once again i have to come back to this because th- this is a pc adventure game so Adjustments are going to have to be made for, you know, a a controller. Yep. Um, But uh, we're we're testing all that stuff out right now. Um, And we have been for quite a while. And, um, yeah, it's going to be cool, actually, uh, because there's not really a game like that out on on console uh, that's going to use, like, uh, this kind of control scheme. So... Um, yeah, well, hopefully it'll translate well. I think, you know, based off my experience with it, it's it's it works, um, but it's not something that you'd expect. <laughs> right. And um, I suppose, uh, what is also the status of System Shock 2 Enhanced Edition? Um, like everything else, it's just it's in development right now. Um, uh, at this point, um, we're just making sure that as many of the updates or upgrades to the game that have been made uh, via the Dark Engine are present in in this version of the game. Because um, mm-hmm. those uh, the team or the the group of people that have been working on System Shock for all these years and have brought it to the state that it's in now um they've done an absolutely insane amount of work and uh we want to make sure that you know our version is at least uh at least it's good um and if it doesn't you know hit that quality mark um you know when it releases it'll it'll get there i'm sure that system shock 2 uh ee is going to require some post launch support no matter what uh mo- you know mostly due to co-op being a thing and um, um, you know testing all that and and actually putting that out live is going to be a it's going to be a pretty big deal in terms of um, uh, post launch support and uh, I suppose shifting to a more philosophical question um, be the there... last person though I have to get going right right I do want to ask um, to end things here, um, is yeah. Night Dive just in the business of, you know, um, enhanced remastering these days? Because, you know, earlier on in your history, you just put out straight up re releases of, you know, like the um, Freddy Fish games, for example. Um, you know, is everything that you release going forward going to be enhanced? Um, at least a little bit. Uh, we haven't done a straight re-release in quite a while. Mm-hmm. Um, but that isn't to say that there won't be games like that. Um, you know, if we if we ever finish up wrapping up the rights to, like, Callahan's Cross Time Saloon or Dark Seed or anything like that, um, those will 
those those games will be more or less just kind of straight re-releases with uh, uh, small updates to get them running on modern platforms, but nothing to the extent of like what we're doing with um, you know with Quake or Turok or Blood or anything like that. Right, makes sense. And I suppose uh, a final question in that regard is: Is there any other classic shooters to re-release? Um, I mean, I would personally love to do uh, Chasm the Rift. Mm. Um, and then, you know, No One Lives Forever. Uh, right. <laughs> which, of course. You know, yeah. I don't even want to start talking about. Um, We've talked about but, it. Yeah. There will be, it, it'll happen one day. <laughs> one day. I mean, it may be the end of the world, but it'll be one day. <laughs> it's probably more feasible than Goldeneye right now. Like, yeah. Uh, one day I'll tell you guys the story about Goldeneye. Uh, no. Not today, but yeah, I got a, I got a pretty, pretty long story about that. Oh boy. <laughs> I, I, I hear it. I guess another one to pick is Disruptor, which is a forgotten PlayStation uh, FPS released by... In- uh, Universal Insomniac. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, I'm familiar with that one too, and that that's come up a bunch. Um, right. There's that. There's a uh, there's Quarantine, uh, right. which is uh, an interesting game. Um, um, Blood Two, yeah. Condemned. I mean, there's as we get, you know, as we start clearing out the the back catalog so to speak of the the real classics, we can start looking at some of the the more recent ones like uh even like The Darkness or um right. uh Pitch Black or uh, not Pitch Black but uh Chronicles yeah. of Riddick. Yeah. Um yeah. You know, games that you can't get anymore that were first person shooters that uh that were on um um you know, Xbox 360 era kind of games. Yeah, the, believe it or not, the Xbox 360 era is is soon encroaching on that retro. I know it's weird to think about, but you know it did start in 2005. Yep. Well, that's retro to me now. <laughs> yep. Anyway, um, I'll see if my colleagues here have any further questions for you. I think I'm good. Like, <clears throat> likewise. All right, um, Stephen, as always, it was wonderful having you on the program um, and getting updates to all of the projects that can be talked about th- at this point. Um, hopefully, we'll have you back on the program when um, either new things are announced or you know more things are ready to be released. Absolutely, I'll be happy to do that. You know, until then, like uh, for example, the System Shock remake can be wish listed on I think all the major set- storefronts on the PC, um, and you know, keep an eye out for all of their games in their various outputs. And yeah, that will about do it for this installment of Fragments of Silicon. Um, the week ahead, so coming up on Friday's program, um, we'll be having Lewis. Uh, Gutierrez, Albert Navarro, and Pablo Moreno of Cruxel Studios. Um, they are currently developing a game called Adventure, although it's doing the Leet Speak thing with the um, E's or 3's. Um, weird, spooky homage to Atari's Adventure. Uh, looks, uh, looks really intriguing from what I've seen so far. Um, and coming up on the Sunday reviews, we'll be having reviews of Robot. Omno, my 80s dashboard, and Hell Blasters. And we do have an, a new installment of Last News Desk on the left happening in about 20 minutes. So look for that. And you know, until next time, I shall wish you good gaming. <laughs>